to give a quick starter, so this is a villain AU. So, um, but I do have some warnings, so that's why I'm here. So, warnings are heavy mentionings of alcohol and drinking. The reader is a bartender. And mentionings of guns. If It's never used, but it's still there. But anyways, those are the warnings for this. Remember, this is a villain AU. But, aka Mafia AU, so, <laughs> boo boo boo. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy! Just call me if you need help making a drink, your boss said from the front of the building. Otherwise, you should be good. And with that, he flipped on the flashing open sign, and you were basically sent off on your own. You were only equipped with two years of, legal, of legally being able to drink. And the five basic drinks the restaurant owners had taught you before your shift. There are ba These are basically what everyone orders. And that quickly became a lie when the first drink someone ordered was some special shit on the menu that you'd never heard of. And your boss was nowhere to be seen. You made it only with the line lighted ingredients list and the woman who ordered it politely enough to accept it with a thanks. You had only ended up attending college for a year before you decided to, you absolutely hated it. After dropping out, you weren't quite sure what to do next. You had been any sort of vocalition track, yeah, or vocational track, and you couldn't even picture what you might want to do instead. The, ble the best place to start is getting a job, you decided. Let's get some basic experience. Miraculously, without any bartending experience, you would accepted a job at a simple Okiasanka restaurant and bar. It wasn't the greatest part of the town, and you also happened to live only a couple blocks away from the location. The rent was most affordable, considering you only had what was left of your retail salary, salary sorry. but you already noticed the cracks in the too-good-to-be-true deal, such as the various broken apparent, apparent God appliances that you would surely lose your deposit over anywhere you moved out. Another round, a man enthusiastically yelled into the building. You heard, I'm Yin. Your boss, who was undoubtedly drunk, also called out. Oh, oh, on it! You gave the lackluster response as you gathered another bottle of sock sake to bring to the group. You really hoped as you watched your boss down another glass that you wouldn't have to pick up his slack on the other customers. It was already enough handling the bar, but you didn't also want to have to figure out the regular menu. Can I take my break already? You thought to yourself. You scanned everywhere around the bar in hopes that someone might be leaving soon. What it actually revealed to you was quite the opposite. A new person was seated. You hadn't heard him come in or notice him sit down, de despite his rather striking appearance. He was wearing a lot of black clothes, but his hair was styled into a big red spikes. Can I help you? You greeted and hoped you wouldn't be upset that you'd left him waiting. Just the usual. He didn't even look up from his phone as he spoke. For the first time all night, you took a pause before what the hell you were supposed to do. Obviously, you had to ask him what he meant, but you also knew that this man would order a usual, didn't look a, a server in the eyes, and were otherwise rather muscular, could be most stubborn. Would he yell at you for asking? Say something to your new boss about it? You weren't too keen about crying on your first day at the job. Um, I'm sorry. I'm new here. Can you tell me what your usual is? You pulled out the, the best customer service voice you possibly had. The man looked up quickly and intently, oh, intently accompanied yelling. Instead, you got 
Oh, sorry. You sounded just like the last bartender. You were <laughs> decently surprised by his kindness he displayed, even thought it was just the bare minimum apology. I was a bit distracted by、um, work here. It's this one. He twisted. He twists the menu, a drink menu, around to you. It's the one, but with a couple of different things. Much to your joy, the drink he pointed to was one of the few your boss taught you, and modified were pretty easy. Thanks. Oh, I didn't get to introduce myself. I'm Karashima. I come here pretty often. He sent you a wide, sharp tooth smile when you slid the drink his way. Lin, I come here pretty often too. You introduced yourself. He seemed to find your joke pretty funny. Surprisingly, you were still working there for a week when you saw Karashima a second time. You hadn't even been at the job, oh, been at the job, but you'd learned two basic rules. One, the boss drunk with customers almost daily, and two, he'd be drunk to, too drunk to serve customers after a couple hours, leading you and the other one person on staff to handle both the customers and the bar with little help. When Karashima showed up, he was like a, sir, a saving grace. You'd been going back and forth between the dining room and the bar for the several past hours. Now, after your boss disappeared somewhere in the back, your coworker claimed he passed out in his apartment above the restaurant. So, when you returned to the bar after rushing around the dining room, things were starting to slow down. And, with the exception of one other couple. Karashima came in at a rather calm pace, a rather calmly time. Hey, you greeted. Man, you look exhausted. He chuckled. Rough night, you could say. He replied. Well, do you remember my usual? He asked. You laughed nervously as your face heated up a bit. Do you care to remind me? No worries. I haven't been here in a bit. He walked you through the drink again until you remembered. The motions to make it. So why'd you come here? He asked as you worked. Like this bar or the city? You replied, or replied with a question, sliding the drink his way. Either one. He shrugged before taking a sip. <sighs> well, I didn't know where else to go, and this place came up most for apartments and jobs. The city and the bar. You exclaimed. What about you? Work mostly. Karashima shrugged, easily eating one of the cherries that came in the cherish with the drink, which is. You tried to promote him further. He tried to laugh off the question. It's kind of classified stuff. In DAs, you know. His expression was pretty unbelievable, mostly, from the stuttering and his hand motions he did while speaking and pausing. He didn't. Push too much. There were pretty small range of pronacities where you could have red dyed hair like his own. The handful you could think of was definitely including a few you wouldn't surely share just with anyone. Sure, sure, classified. You mocked. Hey, I'm serious. Despite his statement, he continued laughing with you. You spent such oh you spent such of that night talking with him about the wide variety of topics. There wasn't any specific or really convertent to each of the topics, but you really enjoyed yourself. That was until your coworker had called out for you. Hey, Lynn, can you stop flirting for a bit and get these plates? You had hardly even noticed the pl- the place. Had almost cleared out, and only Karashima was left. You could have just asked for help. You didn't need the flirting part. You rolled your eyes, despite your once he、oh, once again heated up face. I should probably go away. A noticeable flush of red coated his features. You thought ab- about mentioning it, but refrained when thinking th- through it. Your face kind of looks like your hair. Sounds like an insult. Here, he slips a card across the bar ta- bar top. Your eyes widened at a bit of the card that sat on the table, a sleek black with clear silver numbers adorning it. I'll be right back, you said as it 
you took the card with you towards the register. Don't only rich people have cards like this? You thought to yourself as you looked it over. What the hell is he doing here if it's if he's stacked? You didn't miss the small chuckle he gave at your reaction and your del- it delightedly handed the, of the card as you slid it back towards him after clearing his tab. See you around. He waved goodbye while exiting out of the front door. You didn't forget to gossip about it with your coworker afterwards. Why the fuck is he... Oh, why the fuck is he there? Is there an $8 charge from a bill on the card? Bakugo was quick to ask Hiroshima the next day. Why did you give me the card? Hiroshima replied with an uncontrollable retort. Bakugo did not take the response lightly. There were so many unique interactions you could have with Karishima inside the bar. The time between his visits to the bar sorry for my yachting, decreased and he was coming every couple of days and at the same late time and he kept it re- oh my god re- oh my god r- routine by ordering the same drink each and every time. You could be worried about how much alcohol he was consuming if he hadn't only gotten one or two drinks each night with the rest of the time being de- de-slighted to talk to it, talk to you. God. So, although you're seeing Karishiba a lot in the past months, you'd managed to stay at your job. The noticeable third time you met him was outside of work. You had a day off, which normally meant the three things, eating, sleeping, and watching TV. When you opened your fridge to complete your first activity, you realized the majority flaw in your plan. Your fridge was empty, actually. You'd mostly been eating takeout or whatever you'd gotten from work the whole week. Burgundy, (laughs) pardonly, you left your apartment and made the walk to, (laughs) to and from your local grocery store. It was... On the walk back when you ran into Kirishima, he greeted you from behind. Hey, Yin. You turned around to see the red-headed alongside a man you didn't recognize. Hey, Ajo. I didn't expect to see you around here. You were quite sure when you made yourself on a first-name basis with the man, but the name rolled off your tongue easily. Ooh, are you the Lin I've heard so much about? The second man asked Kami, Karishima tried to interrupt the blonde, but only, but he only continued. Kaminari Denki, it's nice to meet you, he winked. Uh, Lin Yin, but I guess you already know that. He only teased Karishima. Guys, the red-headed once again tried to quietly interrupt the conversation. Well, I'm a bit busy, but I'm sure Kari and you can find something to do, Kaminari said. Go for it, bro. You missed him. The w- you missed the whisper to Karishima as he began walking away. Well, Karishima pulled your attention back to him. Do you mind if I walk you home? You hesitated for a moment. You held. Oh, uh, you felt a- you had a good understanding of who Karishima was, although you didn't really quite know the, sp- but the specifics of his job. You were assuming something along the lines of male stripper with the muscles the hair the money and his secret secreticity and it was pretty much against any sort of your own personal productive measures to let someone you know exclusively from work know where you live it's all right you don't want it's all right if you don't want me to he added a bit sheepishly after noticing your pause no, it's all right with you walking me. Sorry, I was just thinking for a moment. You said, come on, this way. So what were you doing? You inter- uh, interrogated the conversation first. Oh, just um, quick business meeting, you know. Cammy and I work at the same business. He shrugged. Do you work with a lot of other people at your job? You attempted to ask a brother inexpicuous question while your brain ran miles to try and figure out what this new information could mean 
Maybe his job is more out and about than dancing and escorts. Oh, our one that is a rent rent a boyfriend thing. He looks. He, oh, he has the looks for it. Kinda. There's just a few people in my um sector. He explains. But you still can't tell me what the job is. You asked. Nope. N D A. Oh, N D A. He shrugged. Right, the NDA. You rolled your eyes. You almost continued walking forward and completely missed your apartment building as you forced your attention on the conversation with Kirishima. Oh, wait, we're here. You took a step back to meet the door. Here? Kirishima questioned, his tone shifting from previous nervousness to a joking manner. What's wrong? You pulled out your keys. I know I'm not rich or anything like you, but um, it's a pretty nice place. No, no, nothing wrong. He wasn't sure, super convincing, but you didn't really have to question his odd behavior long before he made his concerns clear. Have you looked at any other places around? Did someone die here or something? You laughed. Well, no, but um, I heard that the locks here weren't really up to date especially with the landlord and all it took you a second to get what kirishima was insulting oh in insult insulting i mean i i really i only really talked to the landlord once when i moved in he trailed off what he actually sorry if i freaked you out i'm sure it's fine just rumors um i just wanted you to be safe he said before turning a light shade of red and correcting himself. That sounded weird. I didn't mean for that. No, I get concerned even if it's just a rumors. He looked towards the towering building. Despite his reassurance, it felt much more foreign to you now than it did before. Well, see you around. Take care. He began to enter the building. Hey, um, sorry if it's a bad time, but do you want to go somewhere sometime outside of your work? He asked, like a date. The words kind of came out before you really thought of, about them. The blush returned. Um, if you want. Sure, you agreed. You ex- exchanged numbers with Kirishima right after, making it a point that his name was H. Sharkamoji. Why the shark? Because of your teeth and your hair is spiky like a shark fin. The, your texts with Kirishima became just as frequent as when he saw you at work. Sometimes you two didn't message to run out of things to talk about. Well, your talking points were endless. Working at the bar brought out a lot of funny stories from the more light heart drunk Patreons or just the usual general gossip you'd hear over the various loud conversations. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry for the yawning. Alongside your usual text conversation where your date plans were. Have you ever been to the pier? There's a pier, you replied. Yeah, a lot. (laughs) Yeah, lol. It's a bit further. We could meet up at the train station, Kirishima asked. Hell yeah. The fourth time you'd say you met, met up with Kirishima was far more romantic than any other times. When you arrived at the station, he was already waiting there. Hey, we're both here a bit early, Kirishima greeted you. The sun had long set when the two of you met up. Kirishima claimed, yeah, claimed, and you confirmed with a simple inter- internet search that the pier was much more interesting at night with its light fixtures. Yeah, I didn't want to miss the whole pier. How the fuck did I never notice it? You repeated your previous excitement, much to Karasima's amusement. The real ir- irrigation began at the pier where Karasima practically became your tu- tutor guide while leading you somewhere. Oh, they have the best crepes. We can go there afterwards if you aren't full, but the restaurant is just here. You didn't mention a restaurant before, you commented. I wanted to be a bit of a surprise, he trailed off. The pier restaurant was far from cheap. Their long menu of high expensive pronounced premium seafood sent you railing. You were sent for an even bigger loop 
than the Ferris wheel when Kirishima insisted he could pay for it all, following the restaurant were the equally overpriced crepes. Who are you to deny this offer, though? What now? You asked. The train back doesn't come for a while now. <clears> hmm. <throat> well, there's always the Ferris wheel, Kirishima offered. The two of you looked down at the pier at the large, slightly attraction. Much like everything else, it was luminous by its own fairy lights. It seems fun, as long as I pay for the tickets. You giggled at Kirishima. It's not a big deal for me to pay for all this. I don't mind. Kirishima tried to defend himself. Well, it's a big deal for me, so I'm paying. You begin walking forward. Um, but where do I buy the tickets? The tickets were probably the cheapest and most affordable thing you could have bought the whole day. But it was something at least. The line you actually got, oh my god. I currently got on the Ferris wheel was a bit long. Kirishima and you got time to talk. And if Kirishima slipped his hand around yours during the wait, you didn't stop him. Tickets? The worker asked when the two of you reached the front of the line. You handed the man two tickets before you were led to the next capsule. It was fitting fire, uh, fire engine red with gold swirls decorating it. Kirishima and you sat the same side as the worker shut the door and sent you off with a enjoy the ride. The Ferris wheel moved up and around and rather slowly, leaving just enough time to view the vaca- vast ocean to the f- right of you. To the right of you, too. Wow, it's so beautiful, you commented. Right, right, Carrie? His gaze was directed towards the crashing waves as well. Yeah. The Ferris wheel circles a total of three times before beginning to a stop. Encapsulating you two would need to get off soon. We didn't quite stop at the top. You notice as your cast bowl just swung it, it to its, oh my God, its stop at the top left of the right. Yeah, I guess we aren't quite in the rom-com, huh? Kirishima jokingly asked. And after it was so romantic too... He sighed dramatically. It could keep, if it, it could keep being romantic, you know. How so? Red eyes darted quickly downwards. Your lips, a small spiked tooth, came to swing, snag his bottom lip. As Karishima seemed to think about what to say next, you didn't even realize you'd move so close to his body until the sight gave. Gave, the silent he gave you moment to notice it i could kiss you he asked you could your hand which wasn't currently resting under his came up to rest against his cheek and that would be something you want Kirishima continued yes nothing else needed to be said before your lips met together do you think it's going to slow down? You looked up at Kirish- oh, the big drops of rain that were falling aggressively from the dark clouds above you. Probably not. Kirishima tilted his phone towards you. Looks like it might be for hours. It was only a couple weeks of af- after your first date with Kirishima that you went on a second. But as he was walking you back to your ha- apartment, the steady sprinkles of rain that had st- started earlier became a full-on downpour. Once the rain had started, you two hid under the canopy of the closest building. Guess I need to start finding an Uber. You pulled out your phone from your pocket. You could, um, Kirishima interrupted. You could come to my place. It's only a block away from here. Why didn't you suggest that in the first place? Come on. I don't want to stand out in the cold anymore, Kirishima beamed at your positive response. It's just this way. Kirishima's apartment was modest. It was clearly much pricier than yours. Your own studio was about half the size of it, but it wasn't anything wild like some massive two-floor a penthouse. Do you need a blanket? I have a couple. 
or a change of clothes, you could dry your clothes here and then it will be good whenever the rain stops, he offered quickly. I'll take care of the clothes, he replied. I might take them with me, though. I wouldn't mind that. His face lit up red after. Um, give me a second while I find something. He wandered off to where you could assume was his bedroom. You politely took your shoes off at the front door before proceeding to wander around the and explore a bit. The apartment was very no very noticeably red. The couch was bright red. The kitchen had a lot of red utensils, and the majority of his shoes were red. Are those Crocs? He decided to ignore their shoe rack for now. It felt very homely, mostly because of the clutter. Weights rested behind the couch, a couple of jackets laying around the furniture, and a handful of books were sworn, sworn about. They all seemed to have a bookmark or a sticky note marking a random part of in the middle. Huh, he left this open. He noticed in a unique-looking cabinet was sitting against one of the walls with the top drawer left open a crack. Out of curiosity, he looked into the small drawer and noticed something. Is that... You know, you hesitated in opening the drawer more. Karishima was your boyfriend now, so it wasn't too, instruct, oh, too invasive to look at his things. But it was your first time at his house. What if he noticed you looking at his drawer and thought you were going through his things? Just a quick peek. You opened the drawer just a little bit more to see the object in the sa some more detail. And it was... It was a gun. You, oh, you snuck in a breath at the sight of the object. There was no denying it now. Maybe it's fake. It looks pretty real. And who would keep something like that in a drawer like this? You thought. Guns were completely illegal in Japan. The only times you were really seen one was with your own eyes was one hero had or in those horror movies horror news stories of uncovered weapons smuggled ra smuggling rings or yakuza bases was kirishima part of something like that is that why he didn't talk about his job hey i think these all should fit kirishima exited the room with a handful of clothes just in time for you to shut the door um everything all right yeah i was just he looked around quickly to find some excuses looking at this photo oh yeah that one is of me and bakugo We've been friends since, like, high school now. Kirishima didn't seem suspicious at all of you, and proceeded to ex explain a handful of other pictures he had on top of the dre dresser. I took this one myself, too, Kirishima concluded while pointing at a picture of a rather pretty mountain range. Sorry, I started rambling. The bathroom was across the hall there. Let me know if you need anything, and anything doesn't fit. Kirishima handed you the clothes. Thanks. You quickly moved into the bathroom and shut the door behind you, maybe a bit more loud than you meant to. Just don't think about it for now. You thought, just because he has something like that doesn't mean he's dangerous, right? The rest of the night had gone all right. You ended up staying the night and taking his clothes with you, but you couldn't stop thinking about it. At first, you were all right with the secretness of the job. You were sure you wouldn't meant wouldn't mention your professional as a bartender in a lots of settings, so why would you expect any less out of Kirishima? However, it felt extremely too sinister now. He might seem nice, but that didn't always guarantee he would stay nice. Hey, your phone buzzed with a text from the redhead. We haven't talked in a while. Everything okay? You started, stared at the words on your phone. Can we meet at the park tomorrow at 12? We need to talk. You only read his imminent response of, yeah, ignore the rest. The six times you met Kirishima, you were standing in the park. Your hands were buried as far as they could be in your pockets. The cold breeze of the coming winter were far worse than constant anxiety was bubbling in your stomach. Hey, a familiar voice called out. He gave you a bright smile, but even he seemed unsure about it. Hey, you replied. Um, do you want to walk around a bit or just go straight to talking, he offered. Can we walk a bit? You began down the path. 
that was just ahead of you and let Kirishima catch on his own. So, how was your week? I hope work has been going well. Kirishima awkwardly began the conversation after a couple of minutes of silence. It has, he chose to answer. That's great. He half hardly added. Adriel, he began. Where do you work? Is that what this is about? Sort of. Well, um, look. It's just, I'd tell you if I really could, but it's a lot of complication legal stuff, and I wouldn't want you getting caught up in it. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Kirishima, you inserted. Then why'd I find a gun at your house? At the very least, just tell me why that was there. You added, Kirishima was silent for a moment. Maybe you'd been a two bit bold? This could be a mistake. Ian, I. Kirishima reached out a hand to take yours. I don't want you to be scared about it. I do dangerous work, but I would never get you involved in it or put you in harm's way. Then tell me what it is. You pulled your hand away from his, or we're done. You didn't quite expect to be adding the second half of your sentence. Maybe somewhere deep down, you hoped this would go the opposite way. Hiroshima would correct your confusion and just say it was fake, leaving you a bit embarrassed, but revealed nonetheless. Instead, he seemed eminently honest that he was a dangerous person. Okay, um, we don't why don't we sit down i'll explain everything he pointed over to towards the closest bench for the two of you to sit at a villain organization that was how kirishima described his profession well they were legendary as villains in reality everyone in the group had some point been viably to become a hero turned away for quirks too dangerous or villainous they were trying to reform the hero society by going against it like those guys a couple years ago with the high schools you fearfully worried no no nothing like that we go after the hero commissions directly and we aren't violent Kirishima assured you it can still be but oh rush the commission is pretty set on their image so they can try uncon uh, uncovering a lot of things about us and I don't want you getting hurt in it, Kirishima continued, but it was selfish of me to keep it to myself. I, I understand if you don't want to be involved with it, with me anymore. He practically had to spit that second part out. If what you're telling me is true, he began, and I support you, even if it's dangerous. You realized you could come to regret those words. It was the big com commitment to willingly associate yourself with a wanted anti-hero group but the bright smile Kirishima responded with somehow more so than usual made the decision feel worth it you won't regret it I promise we'll be open about anything and Kirishima rambled on and on as he swooped your body up into a hug I better not you respond quietly while hugging him back so, the thing about the landlord, you asked when pulling away from him. Well, I actually haven't heard anything bad about the landlord, but people have a tendency to borrow money from Bakugo and never pay it back, Bakugo admitted. I told everyone else to stay away from there, though, so you should be fine. So, I've been glaring at my landlord every day. For no reason. Sorry. Is it just me? Or am I terrified of um, Ferris wheels? I hate Ferris wheels. I think it's because I'm afraid of heights. But then again, I was on a plane and then I wasn't afraid of the air. I don't know. But is anyone else, like, terrified of Ferris wheels? Because everyone says I'm weird because I'm terrified of Ferris wheels.